What's up and welcome to the video. I'm Dr. Daniel Ricciardi, gut health expert, licensed pharmacist, fitness enthusiast, and creator of SIBO Shortcut. Today, I'm gonna share my top 10 both inexpensive and versatile foods that I eat pretty much every day. And then I'm gonna provide four of my favorite recipes to you as well down in the description of this video. These 10 foods, why do I love them? There's a lot of reasons. They're inexpensive. You can find them in every regular grocery store. You don't have to go off to the specialty grocery store. They're easy to find once you're actually in the grocery store. You basically just make a lap around the outside of the grocery store and they're all there. They're very filling, meaning based on the amount of calories you're eating, you feel satisfied. They're all single ingredient foods, which means they're less likely to cause you inflammation and symptoms. They're easy to prep. If you're a meal prep person, I did this for a long time. These are really easy foods to work with. You can do a lot of different recipes with them very easily. And then lastly, I just like how they taste, which is probably the most important one because any diet that you're doing, if you hate the food, you're not gonna wanna continue with it. They've helped me maintain the body that I want to have and the gut health that I want to have. And at the same time, I'm not spending a ton of money at the store on expensive foods. A couple of these in here may surprise you and also stick around to the end of the video because I'm going to give my one big tip on choosing whatever foods for whatever diet you want to eat. Real quick though, before we start, if you do get value from this video, please make sure that you hit that like button and subscribe to my channel. And don't forget to share in the comments below, what are your favorite 10 foods? And now let's go see what those 10 foods are. All right, welcome to the kitchen now. And first food up that we have on our list is beef, or I guess in this case, to be more specific, I'm talking about ground beef. I do enjoy stuff like a steak once in a while, but for the most part, honestly, during the week, this is what I'm eating for one of my main protein sources, just because it's easy to cook and compared to a steak, it's a lot cheaper. Beef's really high in iron, zinc, and vitamin B12. This one that I have here, it's a 88-12, meaning 88% ground beef, 12% fat. I usually like to try to find one around 90-10 just for my personal preference on taste. Some of my favorite recipes using this right now are a smash burger on sourdough, breakfast tacos, and then this other recipe, I call it Monster Mash. It's beef, sweet potato, some kind of vegetable, and then egg. Red meat can get a bad rap sometimes because yes, it is higher in saturated fat, and yes, it is higher in cholesterol. However, do I care? No. Real beef without added ingredients, it's not going to make you sick, and it's not going to give you chronic disease is this has been disproven. It's when you take this real healthy beef and you start frying it in things like seed oils, adding nitrosamines, adding preservatives and other chemicals that it begins to be unhealthy. Second up on our list, we have regular whole eggs and yes, including the yolks. In addition to being high in choline and vitamin D, eggs are just super versatile as well and relatively inexpensive. Like beef, they kind of have the stigma of a high cholesterol food and there's been a lot of sources saying that they're not safe for you to eat and if you eat an egg, something terrible is going to happen. Not the case. Feel free to go ahead and eat these. On average, I eat six eggs every day. Quick story on eggs. Growing up, our family, we only made scrambled eggs. That was it. No other type. I continued doing this when I was an adult, so I never ate any other types of eggs with any regularity until I was at least in my 30s. I'm 35 now, by the way. But now, over easy, my favorite by far. Nice runny yolk. Can't beat it. And one of my favorite ways to enjoy them, down in the description below, there's a recipe for avocado toast and this uses an over easy egg. I think you're really gonna like it. All right, third food up on the list, Greek yogurt. Yes, it is dairy, but I digest it really well and it's high in protein. So omitting it would actually be doing myself a disservice because I'm missing out on all these good nutrients and extra protein. It's also a good source of vitamin D and calcium. You can have it just in a bowl with fruit, which is really good. I also love making Greek yogurt. If you look down in the description below, you're gonna see a recipe that I really like. You can also stir in some collagen or other protein with Greek yogurt if you're really trying to have a very high protein meal to hit your macros, you can do that with this and it's really enjoyable. The last positive with it that I'll mention is that you're getting some probiotic species with Greek yogurt. The only thing I do wanna mention, if you're picking one out at the grocery store, I like to pick a plain one that's not flavored. I find that these tend to be a little bit easier to get one that isn't full of added sugar, that isn't full of thickeners, and also doesn't contain natural flavors. So if you're looking at the label, get one where it just has cultured milk and nothing else added. And then if you want to add other stuff to it, like fruit or honey, go ahead and do that. All right, moving on from the protein.
protein sources. Number four, broccoli. Broccoli is very high in sulforaphane, which is an antioxidant, helps with detox. It's also high in folate and vitamin K as well. I like just chopping the broccoli up into small pieces and baking it until it's a little bit crispy with some salt added on top. It's also a really good source of insoluble fiber, which can help move bowels along if you have constipation. Food number five, this is not gonna impress you. These are Brussels sprouts that I pre-cooked. I don't have any raw ones to show you in a nice bag. Similar to the broccoli, good source of sulforaphanes, similar nutrient profile. What I typically like doing is cutting these up into quarters so they're really small. So then when you bake them, they get crispy and cook all the way through a lot easier. So you get the nice flaky parts that crisp and brown up. And if you do have an air fryer, these come out great in the air fryer. I don't actually have one of those, but probably should buy one. Food number six, sweet potatoes. These are really high in vitamin A, vitamin C, fiber as well. This is a really good staple, delicious food where if you actually cook it well in the oven and bring out all those caramelized sugars, it tastes so much better. To make these, I typically like slicing them in half, coating the open face with olive oil, putting them face down on a pan, and then cooking at 400 degrees until the edges are crispy-ish, and then the bottom face of the potatoes are golden brown. If you do a good job cooking them, you can just eat these straight as potato wedges, potato halves, and they're so good. Food number seven, bananas. Bananas are great in so many ways. First off, they're really cheap. They ripen very quickly at room temperature as well. If you wanna slow the ripening down, you can actually put them in the refrigerator and they ripen really, really slowly. You'll notice that the peel on the banana may begin to turn brown. This is okay though. The banana is still perfectly fine to eat. And then if you end up not eating all your bananas in time and you're gonna throw them out, don't throw them out. Instead, freeze them and then you can use them for recipes later on. Peel them, slice them up, throw them in a plastic bag, put them in the freezer and they keep for a really long time. Bananas are known for being high in potassium, but they're also high in vitamin B6, which is an important vitamin and cofactor for a lot of body processes, including producing serotonin for mood and melatonin for sleep. Food number eight is pineapple, and this may be seasonal depending on where you live. You may not be able to get it. Pineapple is a great source of bromelain, which is a digestive enzyme, but is also an antioxidant that helps with inflammation. It's also a really good source of insoluble fiber, and I found that at times where I was feeling a little more constipated, pineapple kind of helps speed everything up to get me going again. With that said, tropical fruit, it just reminds you of the beach. And like bananas, if you don't eat all the pineapple before it begins to go bad, you can easily just chop it up like this, freeze it, and use it in other recipes in the future. All right, food number nine, sourdough bread. And before I say anything else, I know what you're probably thinking, but Dan, you're all about eating one ingredient, whole foods. Bread is not that. Bread also has gluten. What's the deal with the bread? Yes and yes to both of those. However, with bread, there's a huge discrepancy in quality and ingredients. If you look at something like a bread in the bread aisle that has 20 different ingredients and a bread like this sourdough, which it just has four ingredients, flour, water, salt, and sugar, and nothing else. Sourdough is also a little bit less gluten than other types of bread. I think when talking about gluten and also dairy, if you're having digestive issues, I've said this a lot of times in other videos, these are two of the most common foods that cause people the most issues. However, if you don't have an issue with these foods when you're eating them and you're not getting symptoms, it's not bad to eat something that has gluten or dairy in it. In fact, if you're omitting them, you may actually be doing yourself a disservice because you're not getting that wider variety of nutrients from other food sources. I actually noticed when I started eating bread more regularly, my bowel movements actually improved a little bit. They were never bad, but I would say they were slightly on the spectrum of constipation. I mentioned the avocado toast recipe before. This is the bread I use. Check out the description below for the recipe. All right, food number 10 is almonds. I guess to be more specific, in this case, this is a bag of almond flour. Why am I holding a bag of almond flour instead of regular raw almonds? The reason is I like dessert, okay? And if I use this almond flour, I can both get a great dose of magnesium, vitamin E, soluble fiber while I'm making these amazing, delicious desserts. And I wanna have dessert every day. So this has been a secret weapon, so to speak, in terms of one of my favorite foods because I'm basically killing two birds with one stone, getting nutrients and enjoying my desserts. Desserts that are gluten-free and way, way lower sugar than typical desserts. You look down in the description, I have my almond flour muffin recipe listed below. This is arguably my favorite dessert that I've ever made and I hope you try it. All right, so we talked about 10 foods. I'm actually gonna throw in an 11th one right now. Raw honey, food number 11. This is the sweetener that I use in pretty much all of my desserts. I like using honey more than regular table sugar for a number of different reasons. One of them being, since my channel is about gut health, regular table sugar has been linked to 
to causing negative changes in the gut microbiome and potentially helping these bad bacteria to overgrow. Honey, on the other hand, actually has some antimicrobial properties against some of these bacteria that we don't want getting overgrown. This 2019 publication by the International Journal of Microbiology actually demonstrates the antimicrobial effect of honey as it showed it may be able to inhibit the growth of certain bacteria such as Staphylococcus aureus, Pseudomonas aeruginosa, and E. coli, which is one of the most common bacteria that causes SIBO, small intestinal bacterial overgrowth. All right, to quickly run back those top 10, we have beef, eggs, whole eggs, Greek yogurt, broccoli, Brussels sprouts, sweet potatoes, bananas, pineapple, sourdough bread, almonds, and then lastly, number 11 we threw in there was raw honey. As a quick disclaimer, this is not necessarily the best diet for everyone. It is not gluten-free, it is not dairy-free, and it is not low FODMAP. However, my biggest pet peeve with foods is that eating single ingredient foods for the majority of people is going to be by far your best option. Per calorie, they're more filling, you get more nutrients, and they're less likely to activate your immune system and cause you symptoms and chronic inflammation. Did I handpick the 10 foods that are the most filled with every different sort of nutrient possible? Probably not. If a nutritionist watched this, they could probably suggest better ones, but these are what worked for me and these are what I love eating. My recommendation, eat what makes you intuitively feel the best. If somebody tells you that they crack the code and have the best diet that everybody should eat, I would say, no, you don't. That is all for today. If you got value from this video or enjoyed it, please like and subscribe to my channel for more related content. If you're new here, I post a new full length video every Monday in YouTube shorts daily throughout the week. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.